Hello everyone, my name is Guchimus, and welcome back to Long Live the Queen. Today we end our epic adventure, so let's just get right back into this. I need to be less angry, so I'll just attend service for that. Let's get some peace of mind, girl. Yeah, alright. So, foreign intelligence... No, ciphering first. Then we'll do foreign intelligence. It's fine with me. Fine with me. That way I'll get the outfit. Yeah. Unlock the new outfit. Wonderful. The negotiator for the rebels has arrived to speak with you. Surrender now, and I'll be lenient. We are not here for our surrender. We are here for yours. Bitch, please. You have one chance to avoid needless bloodshed. Agree to marry one of the Duchess Aresi's sons. She will become your regent and guide the domain into stability. What? Um, you will be allowed to maintain a figurehead title. Uh, what kind of compromise? Ah, uh, I want to know what kind of compromise she had in mind. I don't want to be a figurehead. I got. I got real shit to do. What's the compromise? I'm willing to marry your son and listen to her advice, but not to give up my crown. My ancestors were kings and queens where uh, Arises weren't even in Novin. I am the queen. Nothing she says will change that. I'm afraid that's not good enough. Surrender now. We'll prepare to meet us in battle. Damn. That's too bad. Uh, refuse, of course. Then battle it must be. I'm ready for this war. Okay, we're angry again. We're, we gotta get some peace of mind. Peace of mind. Alright, got the new outfit too, which is good. Boost the intrigue. Oh, I love it. Love that spy outfit. Wonderful. Okay, so now we can just internal affairs, uh, foreign intelligence, I think. Those are, seem to be more useful than the ciphering. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. War rages for control of Nova. As defending queen, you are required to take personal control of your forces. Your control of magic enhances your claim to divine right of rulership. Your lumen powers causes chaos among your enemies, with explosive displays and waves of terror. You lack the strength to take on a whole army by yourself, of course. They don't need to know that. Battles are won and lost, Folgers solemn and decorating the landscape. The final outcome is a victory for your side. Your forces sweep through the rebellious duchesses and are met with cheers by the local population. Aris, the ringleader, is executed, and the other rebels forced to pay tribute to keep their holdings. Of course, there is also a cost paid in lives. Your keen sense of military strategy enabled you to resolve the affair with much less loss of life than might have been expected. Uh, failed that one, that sucks. Total casualties were almost half a battalion on your side. And uh, one and almost a half battalions amongst the rebels. That's not too bad. Only half a battalion for us. And uh, one and a half for them. We whooped their ass. Of course, there are no more rebel soldiers now. They are once more your loyal subjects. Perfect. Uh, that seemed to go very well. Just being a badass magic user is very good for war. Alright. We'll just keep being willful. Well, 10 service to be less angry. We're almost done with intrigue already. Just do ciphering internal affairs, I think. Eh. Ciphering internal. I've never encountered a ciphering thing yet, though. There's a lot of the things, actually, I haven't come up with against yet. That's alright, though. Things have been so unsettled lately. 
Everyone's on edge. We need something cheerful. I mean, I killed like 500 people yesterday with like a huge fireball. It was... Now people are so scared. Whoa, whoa. I just skipped. My bad. Okay. You could hold a tournament. What a good idea. Knights, jousting, musicians, all sorts of competitions. Everyone loves a contest. What will you offer as prizes to the winners? Um, might be a good, good time to employ somebody malleable. Yeah, winners will have the option of taking up royal appointments. It's a recruitment drive. Very well, I will draft the announcements. You leave him do his work. Awesome. So I think we need one or two more days as willful still. So let's just attend service, be less cheerful, get some calmness in our heart. Yeah, two more days. So we'll do internal, yeah, we'll just finish off internal affairs for intelligence completely today. Finish it off completely. Nothing more to learn about that. Nothing learn more to learn about that. This is the week of the general tournament. Nobles and commoners alike have turned out to compete against one another. The people will be pleased if you participate in the games. However, it would expose you to danger. What event do you wish to participate in? Uh, do I want to... I mean, should probably just do something relatively safe. But I'm not really good at any of that. To be honest. What if I just do the mounted parade? I kind of want to go back and save now. Alright, let's see what the mounted parade is. You choose to lead the parade mounted on a brilliant white horse. That's awesome. Okay, yeah, I don't need particular skill to do that. Uh, not good with horses or composure elegance. That's fine. However, the effect of your appearance is spoiled somewhat by the way you are clinging to your horse's neck. Perhaps it might have been wise taking some riding lessons first. All the winners are announced and displayed to great cheers. As near queen, you place flower garlands around their necks. All of a sudden, a man approaches the winner's platform. It's Kevin, the Earl of Lowe. In one hand, he carries an armored gauntlet, and in the other, a sword. My family's blood is on your hands! Arise, the ringleader of the rebellion. She was his mother. He casts his metal glove on the ground with a clatter, and raises his sword, pointing it at you. I challenge you, LOD, a life for a life. He's challenging you to a duel? Field magic success, awesome. Doesn't he know you could burn him to a crisp just by waving your hand? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about just killing him with magic. I mean, uh, I could just decline. If I accept, he's going to kill me. Kill him with magic or refuse is going to be the way to go here. I think I'm just going to have to kill him with magic. Without further word, you direct your full force of your magical wrath at the Earl of Lowe. There's a horrible scream and the smell of burning flesh. I decline. Kevin's sword falls to the ground beside his gauntlet. He won't be needing either anymore. Oh man, that's harsh. But, I mean, you can't just challenge me like that. I'm not good with swords. I do magic, bro. <laughs> Oh, jeez, man. All right, this is the last day we need being willful, so perhaps we should attend court. All right, I don't even think I need full willfulness to max out ciphering anyways. So we'll just double stack on that, and that should max it out. Yeah, that was, that was classic, though. Just burn him to a crisp with magic. <laughs> Your mother was a traitor, okay? She tried to kill me. My lady, your father wishes to speak with you. He says it's urgent. Fine, I'm coming. Your father 
you find your father standing over a map of the coastline, his face grave. Ships have been sighted on approach from Shangia, not trade ships. This is a war fleet. Ah, I was expecting this. I've been expecting something like that. Yep. Within the week, they'll be within Novan waters. Within two, they could reach the capital. And we will fight to defend our borders. You can ride, try to use treasury funds to hire additional soldiers, but it may be difficult on short notice. We'll recruit soldiers. That's why I didn't help my own people. Fine, we'll do that. You'll need to draw up a naval strategy for our ships to carry out. You could choose to act as an admiral and lead the ship in person, but the danger to you would be very great. Unless you think your personal skills would make the difference, I would strongly advise against it. Oh, uh, does personal skills mean my magic? I think I probably should. Yeah. Yeah, I'll direct the fleet. The risk is mine to take. You have your mother's heart. There was one more thing I hesitate to ask, but... An invasion. It's a sort of disaster for which a lumen's power may be worth the cost. The ship's fleet could be destroyed before they reached our waters. Many lives would be saved. I don't know any magic that could sink a whole fleet. I'll have to ask my mentor. You find the Duchess of Ursil in her in the guest quarters. A fleet from Shangia is attacking us. Is it possible to sink them all with magic? It is easy enough to attack one soldier, one ship as a demonstration, but to obliterate an entire fleet? You would need an immense amount of power spread over a large area, more than any one lumen could control. If you tried to raise that much power yourself, you would die. Not could, would. So it's hopeless. Not necessarily. The most dangerous power of Imperial Nova was that Lumen's acting in consort. If the need is great and the will is true, one Lumen may choose to give command of her power to another. Three, perhaps four, working together might have the strength to destroy a fleet. You, me, the priest Cicilline, my Aunt Lucille, will that be enough? If your will is strong enough to wield that power, then yes, it should be. Oh yeah, I do have four. Perfect. Um, we'll use magic. Uh, if I use magic, it's going to kill me, isn't it? My will is not strong enough. Uh, we'll use magic. And that's what we'll do. We'll save our domain. Yeah, well, well we got to save our people. Hopefully it won't kill me in the process. Go to service. Get less afraid. Oh, yeah, I don't need to be willful anymore. That's shitty. Um, I, there's actually literally nothing really good I can do. Athletics, maybe. We're going in the water, maybe climbing and swimming. Alright, we'll do some athletics. Climbing, swimming. Okay. Danger on the high seas. You and three fellow Lumens join hands and fo to focus your powers. Your magical training has paid off by allowing you to stage this attempt at a safe distance from the invading vessels of war. Lumen success, nice. Far in the distance, you hear the roar of the ocean. You have charmed it as it buckles beneath the incoming ships, opening up a maw of void into which they tumble helplessly. Then, as they fall, the water rushes back around them, washing over the deck as and pummeling hulls. Even from so far away, you can see the disturbance you have made rippling through the water. Some of the Shenjians may survive, but their threat as an invasion has ended. Wow. We just demolished them. I didn't even need to hire people. I, we just demolished them. 
Nice. I think. Well, I don't need to be willful anymore. Maybe I'll go to yielding. Alright, she's depressed now, but now... I can possibly get some other stuff. Yeah, it's just animal handling and expression. Dang. Athletics actually has a deep buff right now. It sucks. So does everything good. I guess we'll just do expression. Decoration, instrument. Decoration, instrument. I think I might have wasted all my money though. The magical storms you summoned created giant waves which swept inland as well as out. Damage has been reported along the shoreline from Mazamba down to the northern Mari. The beaches are covered with wreck and the bodies of animals. Enemy fishers and cocklers are missing. Are you blaming me? Of course not. Many more lives would have been lost if the fleet had landed. What worries me is that these reports are increasing even long after the events of the battle. More than that, an observatory in Caloris has seen strange shapes in the sea to the west. Something worse than a simple storm may have been unleashed. Does that mean a sea monster? Oh, did I wake up a sea monster? Oh, man, that's no good. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad I ended up playing through it again, because this is much interesting than my other couple playthroughs. I'm pressured right now. What does that give me a bonus in? Pressure. That'll give me a bonus in athletics and faith. You know what? I'm going to keep, keep with the pressured. Yeah, so that way I can go back to my athletics. I'll be running and climbing, I guess. I'm a little worried about that sea monster, though. That could be a little bad. In the Grand Hall, your father is waiting for you. Our fears have been realized. A Kraken has arisen. A Kraken, an enormous tentacled sea monster who can dive and surface at will. It's fast, ferocious, and apparently unkillable. Any ship that ventures into its range is at risk. This could destroy Nova shipping. Oh shit. Trade success, though. And, o and ocean shipping is really important to our economy. What can we do? Do we just wait and hope it goes away? No. Quite unexpectedly, the priestess strides into the room. What are you doing here? I came to bring the records of the circle so that you would know what you face. Left alone, the beast will feed until the sea runs red, and only then will it sleep. It would cost hundreds of thousands of lives. There are only two ways to end its threat. Lumen spell weaving can freeze a kraken in its tracks holding it motionless, but only for a short time. If the spell is renewed every moon, giving the beast no time between castings to move freely, it should eventually sleep. How long would that take? Approximately seven years. Years? But if at any point the spell cast is too weak or not renewed in time, it would break loose. And the treasury would be drained Keeping up such a routine, what is the other way? It's a well-known that Eldrick Beast can be driven out by sacrifice. The life force of a Lumen or potential Lumen on the cusp of adulthood would be the ideal choice. No, you will not take my daughter. You see, Elodie, this is why I told you to reject them. They are all witches. Even without her mother, Lumen Crystal, she would still have been a potential Lumen. 
Keeping her ignorant would not have kept her safe. A potential Lumen, because I'm my mother's daughter. Which means Charlotte, too. But I could never hurt my favorite cousin. I will not allow this. Choice belongs to the queen. Me. Um... Why can't I do Charlotte? <laughs> that, I, I totally would have done Charlotte. I guess we'll try and seal it. We'll have to do our best to seal the Kraken away, no matter how long it takes. After all, isn't that what our magic is for, to defend the world from darkness? I will teach you the necessary spells. You must arrange the transportation. I can't sacrifice myself. The goal is to survive. Jesus. I'll attend the service again sacrifice myself we better learn a little bit more about swimming yeah we gotta do swimming and running all right running swimming done might have to outswim a kraken there's something going on that no one wants to tell you about servants avoid your eyes and scurry away ministers converse in low worried tones Yet as far as you can tell, your territory is secure. No more taxes are underway, so what could be wrong? You lie awake in bed at night, worrying that perhaps all of your choices have been wrong ones. Come on, girl. Time has slipped by you so quickly. Only two weeks remain before your birthday. Oh, we're going to do this. And your official coordination as queen. Have you done enough to build a stable Nova? I have no idea. The first of your soon-to-be regular voyages has now set out with uh, Celine on board. She appears to have some special affinity with seawater, which makes her the best choice to guide a vessel while it hunts for the elusive beast. After all, you have to find it before you can enchant it. That's true. It is traditional for the palace to provide entertainment and refreshment for the common people when a new monarch is crowned. It's a rare opportunity for the poor of the land to dine like nobles. Unfortunately, the royal treasure has been stretched too far in recent times to, to support a great feast. Perhaps next year. <coughs> yeah, that's too bad. Oh well. No great feast for the people. I guess we'll just keep attending service. Got a new outfit. Wonderful. Um, let's see. Which one? No, it wasn't tuxedo. Exercise gear. Ooh, that's nice. Hello. Hello, hello. And just do more athletics, I suppose. Running, swimming. Swimming. Uh, swimming, running. Yeah, I got it. Third. Cool. Done and done. Wonderful. You awaken to the sound of chanting outside the castle. You stick your head outside the window to see what's happening, then withdraw with a gasp. The peasants are rebelling! Oh, shit. Really? Why? Hundreds, maybe thousands of them, with spears and pitchforks and torches all screaming for your removal and here you are in your tower with all with your armies depleted from the re recent war what not really though of course you do have an advantage over the mob you are a lumen do you dare turn your powers against your own people maybe we'll just go away uh, we'll try to wait for them to go away there's nothing you can do but huddle behind your stone wall and hope that you can resist the siege. But a queen without followers is no queen at all. Having lost the mandate of the people, it is inevitable that you will be replaced. No. No, 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 no. It was just about to try and end the game. Attack them. You refuse to cower like a frightened rabbit, so you will march out and openly show them what power are the gods behind you. Build magic success, awesome. What have been difficult against soldiers in armor is instead ridiculously easy against untrained peasants. You rarely have wave your hand. You 
barely have to wave your hand and people fall away screaming and covered in burns. After only a few minutes, the crowd breaks and flees in panic, leaving behind only the wounded too slow to get out of the way of the stampede. Okay! So... Attacking my own people was the right choice there. I am totally like the evil queen now. That is a little fucked up, probably. Uh, they won't allow me back into church. I guess I'll visit the tomb. Visit my mother. Mother, I had to kill- I had to attack my people. I did so much for them. I won two wars for them using my magic. Now they hate me. She's feeling the pressure, girl. I don't feel- I don't blame you. Uh, climbing, yes, running, I guess? I don't know. A lot of these things never really came up. Or maybe they did. I guess, I didn't really see flexibility. It's all poison. I have to use them, like, once. They're kind of, like, never useful again, it seems. Do climbing, swimming, done. I just want to make it to the coronation. I don't care how I do it. At this time last year, you were celebrating your 14th birthday. You were in the school gardens, surrounded by your friends. A teacher brought you tea and cakes. A wealthy merchant's son wove a crown of flowers for your head. It didn't matter so much that you were a princess then. Your title was something for the future. Many of your peers would be duchesses or earls or the like someday, but not then. You were children. Your parents could not attend on the actual day, but they did send wonderful gifts, some for you and some for you to share. And a week later, they came for a visit, and your mother took you with her through the countryside in a splendid carriage. It was the last time you would ever see her. You wonder if, wherever she is, you can see you, she can see you now. You are 15 years old, a legal adult. You have worked and studied and suffered and prepared. Now the time has come. You kneel before the priestess, barely hearing her words as she recites her bless the blessings. She calls upon the gods to deliver peace, wisdom, and prosperity to you and through you to all of Nova. And then she calls upon you for your oath of rulership. Will you guide and govern and protect your people to the best of your ability according to law and custom? I will. Will you to the best of your ability, best of your power, uphold the ideals of love, honor, justice, and mercy? I will, even though I torched a bunch of peasants last week. Lords and ladies assembled, I present to you your undoubted queen who has sworn you... you... <laughs> Lords and ladies assembled, I present to you your undoubted queen who has sworn you her loyalty. You who have come to give homage, will you do the same? One at a time, the head of each duchessy... duchess duchies, approaches your throne and kneel to swear his or her service to you and your heirs. People of Nova, I give you Elodie, daughter of Fidelia, your true sovereign. What say you all? Long live the queen! Long live the queen! Thank you, I will. Oh, you made it, girl. You made it! Once his daughter was secure on her throne, Jocelyn returned to his birthplace to focus on his duties as Duke of Caloris. He was persuaded he was pursued by many women, but showed little interest in remarrying, directing them instead to his brother, the Duke of Mazomba. Oh, was that because of us? As Lumen Minister, Lucille requisitioned the orange crystal that Elodie had taken from the dead criminal and offered it to her daughter, 
However, Charlotte was not able to activate the crystal's powers. The young queen pointed out that a crazed murderer would obviously have a very different renaissance than uh, her favorite cousin. Charlotte would have to wait to inherit her mother's magic. The queen and her trusted lumens sailed out every week to check on the condition of the kraken, who reinforced the seals and reinforced the seals. It was inevitable that others would read this, would discover their secret and blame them for it. After all, the old Novan capital had been rendered inhabitable by monstrous lumen experiments. A tentacled beast from the deep was just more of the same. Yeah, but it's not really hurting anybody. It's just like a Mara Kraken is awesome. Just freeze it, let it go back to sleep. It'll be fine. The Novan people were not the only ones to notice the increased naval traffic and the frequent absences of the young Lumen Queen. Pirates from Orcus stepped up their raids in the area, hoping to take Elodie hostage and ransom her for their fortune. The Queen was forced to engage an even larger naval escort to make her regular trips to the binding site, and the Novan economy struggled under the burden. Really? Come on. They're just fireball people, right? Elodie eventually married a foreign duke in order to advance her alliances and promote Novan's strength. It was not a love match, but the two parties learned to respect and care for each other. They raised two children, a son and a daughter. That's nice. That's nobles for you, too. The invention of the printing press sparkled the beginning of a new age of literacy and knowledge. Blah, 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 blah. Thus, Elodie's legacy stretched into the future. Wow, I can't believe I actually survived. I actually did play through this a couple times and died horribly. But hey, we did it. Made it through to the end. Well, hey, I, hey, I, I expected to have to do this like fucking five, six more times. But hey, it's done now. So I'm just going to leave that episode here, I think. Thank you all so much for watching this series, especially if you've been like watching all the videos all the way through. I would like appreciate nothing more. And if you subscribe, thank you also. And i um, not sure what I'm going to play next. Probably a little bit of Hearthstone. We'll see what happens. But until then, I will see you all in the next video.